Welcome to the Mazda MX-30. Um, interesting little car because Mazda made a conscious decision in terms of design with the battery. They deliberately chose a small battery. So this is a car with a small range, uh, what, 120 miles? Uh, and that's what they say, so it's obviously gonna be less than that in the real world. So equally, customers buying this car will have to make a decision about, okay, well, do I need a car with a long range or can I cope with that short range? Is this, what's, what's this car gonna be for? Then you're into your whole kind of lifestyle discussion. What do I want this car for? But Mazda did that so that they could keep costs low. Um, this battery, well, what was it, team? 35.5 kilowatt hours. So it is a small battery. They could keep costs low. They could keep um, costs to the environment low by having a small battery in this car. And it keeps it lighter as well. So that's a really interesting choice that they've made in the design. That said, I don't think they've skimmed anywhere else. If you, I mean, it was a conscious decision. All right, it wasn't a skimp. All right, I understand, Master. But that said, the rest of it feels like a, a really decent car. Inside is lovely. Tons of screens, absolutely tons of screens. Uh, so <laughs> if you like screens, you're in. You've got this one down here, which is all your um, climate control, all of that kind of thing, which is quite nice because it's touch screen and buttons. So you've got a combination of the two. Up here, you've got your sat nav, your entertainment, your communications, all of those things are on that. That is not touch screen. Uh, operated by this dial down here. So that's fairly straightforward too. The screen right in front of me, um, obviously it is all digital, but actually I think looks really nice because it's very traditional at the same time. So I quite like that element of it. It looks like an old fashioned dashboard. Thanks as ever to our great friends at Hendy for lending us the car for the afternoon. And we'll put a link for you to follow if you want more information. If you like your textiles, <laughs> you're gonna love this car. Uh, it's very touchy feely, but also with a huge nod to sustainability. Um, inside, but lots of different fabrics. Uh, much of which is recycled, recycled plastic bottles. We've got cork because Mazda started as a cork producing company. So that's a nod to the origins of Mazda. We've got recycled denim in the seats, which is actually a really nice touch as well, really soft. Um, so there's, there's quite a lot texturally inside and that all adds to a really nice I wouldn't say luxury feel, but it adds to a carefully thought through quite luxury feel. The other thing about the car is it's really broad. It feels wide and spacious in the front, particularly when you're driving it. And I think that's partly contributed to by this huge dash, um, but it definitely feels very comfortable. Actually, a pretty good looking car I think it's chunky it's quite high up off the ground it's nice for a family um, its defining feature I guess is these back doors you're gonna love them or you're gonna hate them to get in the back you open the front then you can open the back and of course, the seat belt for the front seat is, of course it is, in this position, which is slightly weird, right? However, I still can't decide whether it's good or not. You know, if you've got a kid in a car seat here, that's quite handy. Got children trooping out here, that's quite handy. And the only downside is that you can't open this window or that window. 
They made another big decision with this car and I can't decide whether it's a good one or not. It's the kind of thing that I think you need to live with for a while and it comes down again to lifestyle, what you want to use your car for. LED lights, standard. So while I'm here checking this out, because obviously I'm so technical, but what I actually was <laughs> interested in was there's so much space in here and the boot is large, but there's no particular space for your cables. So what they could potentially have done was organize some space for your spare cables in this bit. There's a reason though that I am not a car designer. Do you want to see what 366 liters of car boot space looks like? There you go. <laughs> uh, by all accounts, that's quite big. It does look quite big. And when you fold the seats down, it's a nice flat surface, which I always appreciate when I'm moving people's furniture. So it's a practical boot and nice electrical feature. Are you serious? Are you serious? No, not, not. Me and boots. Well, so what's happened is uh, Tina has pointed out that the car is now locked because I pressed that button. All right, so let's get in and let's get going. I don't see the point of it though. She does. Go on, do you want to explain? It's when you've got your shopping and you've got your hands full. Yeah and then you can just lock the car from the boot, shut the boot and walk away. All right. I don't, I can't even get in the car anymore. <laughs> I'm going off this one rapidly. Okay, so yeah, big boot. Get your shopping out. Odd thing there. But look, it doesn't close. But What's the point now. of it? But it's locked now, but then you can shut that No, away. Tina, because, okay, I've got my shopping out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I've got a baby over one shoulder, yeah. puppy over the other shoulder, and I've got my shopping out. Right. Useful. Now what? Well, you're going to have to shut your boot. Right. So, last thing on the list is apparently it's got a really tight turning circle. So, I want to check this out. I've been lurking at this roundabout. Look at that. Look. It's fantastic. It has got a really tight turning circle. It's really cool, actually. It absolutely has got a tight turning circle. <laughs> I wonder how long I can keep going like this before somebody gets out of their car and beats me up. Where are you going? I just joined the motorway by accident. To sort of try it on the motorway just to see what it was like. No, that's what it wasn't an accident because I wanted to test it in the thorough way that we are known for doing. What, via London? Yeah. On the motorway, I think you'll find this is an excellent drive, this uh, Mazda MX30. Feels nice and smooth, uh, overtakes well, and drives really nicely on the motorway as well as regular roads. So if you should find yourself on the motorway, by accident, you'll find it does you proud.